I'm Jack Buffington for RobotBrigade.com. This is another video in my series of videos about digital logic. And in this video, I'm going to talk about counters. And specifically, I'm going to talk about counters that count in a binary sequence. So 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. So the first one I'm going to talk about is called a asynchronous counter. And an asynchronous counter has the bits of its count come out at different times, it, unlike a synchronous counter where they all come out at the same time. So in a synchronous counter, if I were to build that out of D flip-flops, look like this. All right, so right here, this is my, uh, we'll call it count zero output. And we're going to have another counter here. And pretty much the way this works is that Q bar feeds into D. So Q bar will always be opposite of what was on D the previous time. So this one, we're feeding this into D as well. And we have count one. And the way this is going to work is that we tie in over here and we bring this into the clock. Instead of using the actual clock, we're going to tie into Q bar. And if we wanted another bit, we could do the same thing. So that is a asynchronous counter using D flip-flops. So let's say that I wanted to build a synchronous counter. Now, at first, I'm going to show you how to do this with T flip-flops. And a, with a T flip-flop, This is my clock, and since this is a synchronous counter, the clock goes to all of them. Okay. Now, my lowest bit, I'm just going to tie that to a high or a one or positive. And out here comes count zero. Now I'm going to run this down into my toggle input of the next um, flip flop down the chain. And so now Here's count one. So let's look at what happens here. This one will toggle every time. So it starts out at zero, then it goes to one. When it gets to one, it toggles, which toggles this one. So this becomes one zero uh, on the next clock. And then on the next clock, this becomes one. This stays at one because it was previously getting a zero and so on and so forth. Uh, but we can't just do this for the next stage. What we need to do now is have an AND gate coming in here. So that's count two. And if we were to do a third stage, or a fourth stage, all we would do is we'd be just tying on like this, and do a three input end. This becomes count three. 
like that. So that is a synchronous counter using T flip-flops. So um, let's say we wanted to make it out of JK flip-flops. Well, as you may recall, a T flip-flop is equivalent to a JK where, let's do this, where the lines are simply tied together. So everywhere that I have a T input, just tie it to both ends of the JK. And if I were to build this out of D flip-flops, which is actually, uh, maybe you can consider it to be the hardest, um, For the D flip-flop, you don't have anything that you can exactly bring right in. So what we're going to end up doing is we're going to have an exclusive OR. And one of these is my toggle in. And the other, let me think about this. It's one, yep, okay, so if I, uh, bring Q around here to here, let's say Q is 1. If toggle is 1, or let's say Q is 0, if toggle is 1, then I get a 1 on D because of the exclusive OR. Uh, and then that transfers over to here on the next clock. So now it'll be 1. If I have 1 exclusive OR 1, that'll give me 0. So it just toggles like that. And so that's how you Essentially, if you take this circuit and plunk it in for a T flip-flop, that's how you get a binary counter that's synchronous with D flip-flops. So hopefully you've enjoyed this video or at least found it interesting uh, or useful. <laughs> uh, if, uh, if you did, take a look at my other videos on my YouTube channel. I'm Jack Buffington for RobotBrigade.com.